Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. Alright, we all love a good DIY and with Instagram and Pinterest there are pretty much endless options and inspiration and while that can be a great thing, that can also sometimes be a very difficult thing. So today we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts when it comes to DIYing your wedding. When you hear the term DIY wedding, it's probably mostly decor that comes to your mind, DIYing decorations for your wedding, but there's a lot of different aspects of your wedding that you can do yourself, although it doesn't mean that you should, and that's what we're going to get into today. So first of all, let's start with DIYing flowers. So this is something that I get questions about a lot and something that I hear clients potentially considering is DIYing their flowers because florals can be a very high ticket item when it comes to your wedding expenses. So. When it comes to DIYing your flowers, there's a couple options here. If you don't have any floral experience at all, if you don't know how to arrange flowers, if you've never done that before, then just don't even consider this. Move on to the next one, you're not gonna DIY your flowers. If you do have some floral experience, maybe you've done it with a friend at their wedding, or you really enjoy making bouquets, or, or any sort of floral experience, then maybe you can consider DIYing some of your wedding flowers. Now, I never recommend DIYing all flowers. Um, typically what I will say is if you are trying to cut back on those costs and you do want to DIY some of your florals, have a professional florist take care of your bouquet and maybe your bridesmaids bouquets and a boutonniere, anything that needs to be physically constructed and created into like an arrangement into a bouquet and something that's going to be photographed a lot such as your bridal bouquet or bridesmaids bouquets or boutonniere. Leave that to the professionals. Make sure it's going to be sustainable all day long. You're going to have good quality flowers and it's going to be stored properly and not to mention look amazing for your wedding day. Now, if you can set that aside and, and have that budget to have somebody professionally do those florals and then DIY your other flowers, this is still going to save you quite a bit of money. And what you can do here is loose greenery is great to do yourself, um, whether that's on as like garland on tables or or as filler decoration on your bar or cake table or wherever that might be. Loose greenery is something that you can manage by yourself on your own, even if you don't have floral experience. What you don't want to do is try and create your centerpieces for your wedding if you don't have any floral experience, especially. But even if you do. A lot of things people don't realize when they are considering to do their own flowers for their wedding is when you are paying a florist to do your flowers and they're ordering in flowers, first of all, they know where they're coming from and they know the quality that they're going to be expecting. And when they get the flowers that they need, they're going to be processing every single stem. So what that means is they're going to go through and make sure every flower that is being used is in good condition, it's opened up properly, um, there aren't leaves that are dead or dying, um, there's not flowers that are wilted or brown, you know, they're not going to use bad quality florals, where if you're ordering bulk somewhere, you can't necessarily guarantee the quality of those flowers. And maybe you're ordering exactly a hundred stems because that's how many you need for your centerpieces, and they come in and 10 of them are not usable because they're wilted or they're broken or whatever it might be, then you're stuck and you're and you're going to be short. And so that's something that is really helpful when it comes to hiring a florist is knowing that the quality is going to be great. Somebody's going to be spending the time to process all those flowers and make sure that they look as good as possible. Another thing to consider is storage. Um, when you're doing your own flowers and you're ordering in bulk, you're going to be getting a lot of flowers and they need to be stored somewhere that is cool so that they are um, kept the, their integrity is still intact, that they still look nice, that they won't be wilted, that they won't be dying. And typically this needs to be done the day or two days before the wedding. So if you're really busy setting up your wedding the day before and you know family's coming in town, friends are in town, you have to do your rehearsal and your rehearsal dinner, that's a lot to have to do the day before your wedding and I think people don't really consider that or think about it and that's something that you definitely need to think about if you are considering DIYing your flowers. Okay, let's move on. Another thing people think about DIYing is their food and 
Well, this can potentially save you money. Again, I think people forget about the amount of work that goes into this. So if you're DIYing your food, is that is that you personally? Is that family members of yours? And you need to consider everything that goes into that. So does your venue have a place to prepare the food, to store the food, to heat up the food? If you're bringing in you know, trays of, of food that's already prepared, and if this is coming from yourself or from your family members, it's likely going to be there quite early because they're probably not going to just show up after the wedding and, and have the food ready to be served. They're going to be there before the ceremony and then that food has to be stored or cooked or prepared prior to your dinner service. So if that's something that's not going to be easy or not going to be an option for you, don't even consider DIYing your own food. In fact, DIYing your own food is rarely a good idea because of things I just mentioned, but also because that work has to go on somebody. And if you're doing it yourself, it's going to be probably a close family member. And that's a lot of work to put on somebody, not to mention the prep time that's going to have to happen in the day or two leading up to the wedding, as well as transportation, making sure you have everything that you need, serving utensils, serving platters. And the big, big thing to consider is when you are DIYing your own food, you're not going to have staff there to clean up. So when you're hiring a catering service, they're going to have you know, staff members that can bust your tables and clean your plates off and stack them where they need to go so that they are ready to get sent back to either the rental company they came from or with themselves if the caterers provided it. If you're DIYing it yourself, that's all going to fall on you or somebody, a family member, and that's just something that you probably don't want to be dealing with at your wedding. So keep that in mind if you're considering DIYing your own food. A great food DIY to do, though, however, is um, appetizers at your cocktail hour. This is a great thing to do yourself and it will save you a little bit of money if you are trying to cut back on catering costs. You can grab some platters from Costco or set up your own little grazing table, shark, oversized charcuterie board, and that's something that can be done on your own pretty easily. Just make sure that you have somebody in charge of that so that you're not having to deal with that while you're likely getting pictures taken during your cocktail hour. DIYing music. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it, don't, just don't do it. <laughs> I've mentioned in previous videos how highly I think of DJs and how important they are to the overall flow and enjoyment of your wedding and if you aren't having that, if you're just thinking, hey, I can just make a playlist of music, press play and we're good for the night, um, there's just a lot more that goes into it than that and sure, maybe do that for your cocktail hour or um, you know, during dinner. but. You're going to want somebody there that can keep the night going, that can make the announcements to get everyone inside for dinner, to get everyone outside for the dances, whatever that may be. Uh, music is so much more, or DJ is so much more than just music. And I just, just don't DIY your own music. <laughs> okay, hair and makeup. Should you DIY? Mm. Again, this just is going to come down to personal preference. If you have experience doing hair and makeup for yourself, if you feel comfortable with it, sure, you can do your own. Things to consider here though are make sure that you are using high quality products, that you are having all of the necessary items and doing the necessary prep work before the makeup and after so that you can make sure that it sustains all day. That is one of the best benefits of having a professional makeup artist is they are going to give you a look that's going to last all day because when you're getting ready, when you're getting your makeup done, it's hours before the actual ceremony happens and when your pictures are getting taken after the ceremony. And if you're getting married outside, especially, and you're being exposed to all of the elements, you really want to make sure that you are having a look that's going to last so that you don't feel like you need to touch up your whole face every hour before you're getting photos taken. All right, DIYing, custom builds, and overall decor. I feel like this is something that people think of a lot when you hear DIY weddings and there are definitely some things that you can DIY and some things that I would stay away from. So first thing, if you're wanting to DIY something you saw on Pinterest, do your research first, maybe reach out to people that have done it and find out exactly how they did it and how long it took them. Because sometimes when you're seeing things on Pinterest, they're not actually DIY. It's a professional person that did it and the article just happens to say DIY. So they may have tools and skills and resources that you don't that is going to be a lot easier for that person than it is for you. So and this kind of goes for any DIY decor of any kind. You can DIY anything you want and that's great, but overestimate the amount of time it's going to take you for practically anything because 
that's pretty much how it goes when it comes to DIYing anything for your wedding uh, decor wise or custom builds like an arch or a champagne wall or a photo wall or anything like that. Those are great things to DIY. Um, but again, just overestimate the amount of time it's going to take you and start those projects super early. And um, a good rule of thumb that I tell people, especially if they're working busy full-time jobs, is keep your DIY ratio to like 60-40. Don't try and DIY 100% of your decor. Um, if you are, if you have a lot of time on your hands, you can maybe go on the on the 60 heavy side of DIY and 40% not DIY. However, I recommend doing it the opposite where you are DIYing 40% of your wedding and 60% outsourcing. Um, you can find decor that is used so that you can save money there or just have somebody you know outsource things for you so that you're not DIYing 100% of your wedding because it's always a lot more work than you think it's going to be. Well, hopefully those tips helped you if you are considering DIYing a lot of things at your wedding. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we will see you next week.